and that mid-range love aspect of it, it it almost doesn't make sense. So when I looked at this, this is January 28th I looked at this. Over the last 303 games that he's played, he's shooting 54% <laughs> on long twos. 54%. Yeah, yeah that's all-time stuff. Yeah. And when, when you watch him play, it's not like these are wide open. Like, a lot of these are just him bullying big men on switches. Like, he gets into a pick and roll. Kristaps Porzingis comes out on him. Bam, I'm going to hit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust my shot so it arcs over you a little bit. Another another play. I'm going to get Kristaps Porzingis switched on to me again. I'm going to hit you with a fake and hit a step through. You know, I'm going to get Tory Craig chasing me down. Uh, nope, not going to shoot that mid-ranger, but I'm coming in and throw a little floater in there. And I'm going to wave my finger at you. I don't know if you saw that, but he waved <laughs> that finger at Tory Craig. That was great. Um, but he just, that mid-range game isn't just like a, I have all of this space, I'm going to step into this mid-range shot. Like, it is, it's a really tough shot for him, and he's made, I mean, not for him, it's a really tough shot in general, and he's made it like a super efficient offense unto himself, and that doesn't even count as passing, which I don't necessarily want to say is is the best of his career, but it's at least not worse than it's ever been. And I think the way that he's just the floor general on that team, helping propagate what everyone else is doing, some of the reads and pick and roll. I mean, again, this is a guy that has everything in the bag. He has the lobs, he has the no looks, he has the lookaways to, uh, to, to make a defense adjust to throw it in the corner, throwing it off left hand, throwing it off the right hand. There's nothing that he can't do passing wise. Can we go back to the mid-range for a second? Of course. I mean, 54% is ridiculous. I wonder how much of that is two factors. The first, him taking so many of these right around the free throw line. I have thought of this for years, that your percentages as a player should probably be slightly higher near the free throw line because your brain has practiced that 15-foot shot so much, even though one is a set shot and one is a jumper. And I think you do see that in when you look at heat mapping data, some guys will have a slightly higher cluster right around the free throw line area, just like some players might have a slightly higher cluster behind the three point arc than at like 22 feet, because nowadays they're so used to towing up and practicing from that exact distance. And I think Paul takes a ton of shots. I don't know this actually. I'm just thinking about off the top of my head he takes a ton of shots getting to that elbow. You know, that snake dribble, get to that elbow. And so by getting to that spot, he allows a muscle memory that's familiar with his mind to increase his accuracy on those shots versus just splattering, you know, Kobe spinning one-legged fadeaways all over the place. And the second thing I think he does similarly is, um, you know, you mentioned all these shots over like a big man. It doesn't have to be from the free throw line. If you get into the rhythm of the shot the same way, snake dribble, big bounce, whatever... That's another kind of neurological rhythmic driver that I think makes it likely to be more accurate on shots where other people, I mean, we're like 54%. This, that's like historically insane from the tracking era data that we have for the last 25 years. I mean, just hitting 50% is usually the all-time level. So for a 300-game stretch to be at 54%, he's at 53% this year. We're talking about his mid-range game, right? Off the top of your head, how many players in NBA history are better mid-range shooters than Chris Paul? Uh, I think it gets really hard trying to calculate that before like 1990 or something. Um, just cause we don't, we don't have data. And then I would also, I, I have a model that I built to estimate this, but I think it gets fuzzy once you get back into the seventies because you don't have a three point line anymore. So, I mean, I don't know. I would say just five to ten, maybe. Does that seem like a fair number, just off the top of my head? I maybe. I don't know. I don't even know if there. I don't know if you'd say the ten. I'd say maybe five. I know, but the the thing is, it gets back to what I was just saying yeah, about why yeah. I think his percentages are so high. I would rather have a guy that's way more adaptable in the mid range. If you're if you're truly asking about it, but if you just look at it from the the shots that he only gets to take that selective percentage of elbow jumpers snake jumpers when he has the right switch against a big uh yeah obviously i think his percentages are going to be right near right near the top all time if we looked at peak stretches but for more robust mid-range shooters actually now that i think about it if you include like mid post shots and things like that i he, i don't think you could have him in the top five or top ten it's okay. it's too it's too specialized okay. yeah Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.